Well, my friends, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm just a professor trying to provide some context in the war in Ukraine. So the question is, what will happen now that Putin has been reelected and he is safe and he can just relax for the next five or six years before he has to worry about you know what he's going to do about power again? And so now that he's reelected, will he keep the military pressure like Avdivka, for example? He really wanted to have Avdivka as a win to show, you know, and however many men were, need to be slaughtered in order to gain that eight kilometers through the city of Avdivka didn't really matter as long as he got it. And he kept putting pressure and the Russian army was really pushing on the Ukrainian army since they had an advantage and Ukraine didn't have the artillery to be able to really back them up and had to go drop back to defensive lines. Will that continue? I don't think that will continue at the same rate. I think, of course, they want to keep putting pressure, but the intensity won't be there in the same way that it was before. On the other side of the equation, I think you'll see the the Ukrainians will Will, their pressure will be a little bit less. Over these three days with the presidential elections and the week before, you saw these oil refineries being hit left, right, and center um, to the tune of significant uh, attack on their oil refinery capacity of 14% is the figure that comes from Ukraine. Um, that's, that's really impressive that they were able to do that. I don't think it will, they'll stop doing that, but the the tempo of it, I think, may reduce some. Uh, you also saw Ukrainian drones just attacking multiple targets throughout Russia, especially in the last week. This was this was a very significant increase in tempo. I think that will continue, but it will not continue at the same speed because the culminating event was uh, Putin's uh, election and both sides were trying to have some kind of impact there. Does that mean that the, the Ukraine won't continue to attack uh, ships in the Black Sea? Absolutely not. If you look at Anders Puck Nielsen's uh, video, and I put that in my community tab so you can see it, Anders uh, Puck Nielsen talked about how uh, defending against seaborne drones is extremely difficult. So my guess is that you're going to see far more of both oil refineries, seaborne attacks, things along those lines. Um, will be the big show for the Ukrainians while they're simply just trying to hold on until they can get enough ammunition to be able to uh, bring the fight back on the front lines. From the Russian side, I think it'll slow down significantly um, and they're going to lick their wounds and regroup and come back for a spring or summer counteroffensive that will be in some force. But for now, the tempo, I think, should go should recede and again this is a very dangerous place to be when i'm being a prophet but this is just my estimation of what's what's to come from everything that i've read i could be completely wrong and if i am i am uh, tell me what you think about this what do you think is going to happen now that the election is over thank you for the likes the shares the subscribes and the coffees and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about ukraine